Welcome back, everybody. My name is Taylor Martin. This is The Best MEDC, and today I have a video that I've been working on for a while. Some of these companies sent me knives back in like June, and then I bought some knives, and I've been just trying to coordinate with other brands to make this work, and I eventually just had to pull the ripcord, do it, and then there will be a number two later on. So this video is about lesser known knife brands that you should know about for one reason or another. Maybe they're new. Maybe they've just been flying under your radar, whatever. I know that some of you out there will know all of these, but that's this video is not really for you. This video is for people who may not have heard of one or more of these brands. So with that said, here are five lesser known knife brands you should know about. And let's do the damn thing. Okay, so like I said, I've been putting this video together for quite some time and there were brands that I wanted to include in this video that I just haven't, but we have these five companies on the table. We're gonna go through them one by one. I really like everything on this table. So if you've not heard of any of this stuff and you're in the market for something, give them a look. It might be your jam, it might be exactly what you've been missing. We're gonna start with this one over to the left. This is the most unique knife on the table. Well, it's the only knife on the table right now, but of the bunch, um, this one comes from Homer Knife. His website is homerknife.com or Homer Zhu. That's his real name. And this is the T-Rex. So it does ship in this nice little plastic case. This case isn't like super high quality or anything, but it is a nice touch. It has a little microfiber cloth in here that says homerknife.com, a little bit of foam and then the knife. So nice little presentation. I like that. That was a really good impression for me. That aside, this is the knife. This is the T-Rex and it is quite nice. This is a custom. It's a custom made by Homer Zhu himself. $325 ship. That's what I paid for this knife. That's killer for a custom. It's really, really nice. Now, I didn't build this knife. If I understand correctly, you can have a custom built to your spec, but he has some that are just readily available. That's what I did. This is number 261, it says it right there. Um, and he's been through, I think, 30 different ones since he made this knife. Uh, it does come with this lanyard and bead, and the bead is numbered as well. Bead number 94, made by brass and leather lanyard. And then he has, that made by brass is actually this little thing. It says Homer Zhu on the little brass, like. I guess that's also a bead. I don't know, but it's hammered. Cool little turquoise bead. It definitely like is a is a little different from what I typically have on a knife, but because it came with the knife, I kept it on there. I like it. It's a it's a nice little touch. Yeah. So let's talk about the shape of the knife. It's basically a sharpened spoon. That's exactly what it feels like when you're using it too. Um, I was touching up the edge a little bit earlier today on some ceramic, and it feels like sharpening a spoon. Uh, but it's really cool, and this thing is bulky. It's chunky. It's almost, and I said this back the first time I talked about this on the channel, this it feels very much like a Medford meets a Voxenez design or something, because it's thick and overbuilt, but the ergonomics on it are just so good. Full four finger grip, it's got this nice thumb ramp with heavy jimping on both sides. There's jimping here and here, and it's just super ergonomic for the size. The lockup, is absolutely perfect. The action is great on this thing. Flies open, drop shut for the most part. I mean, as soon as that lock bar engages, uh, you're gonna have to shake it shut a little bit, but I mean, just super great action. And uh, it's a cool little size, small knife, but it is one of those that is small, but mighty. Um, if I could do one thing differently with this knife, it would be the holes. I wish the, the scales, and I think it's just for weight, but I would do without the holes. I would sacrifice the extra weight and just have a solid handle because I think it would look nicer. But um, the one critique I have of this knife, period, is the clip. Uh, I had to take this knife apart. The only way to get to the clip is to fully disassemble it because it's actually attached from the underside, uh, which gives it a clean look, but I had to take it off and actually dremel the underside of this clip because it was so sharp that it ripped my pants. I think it was shorts I was wearing, but it ripped my pocket the first time I carried the knife. So the retention on it was very high, but it's actually 
hooked a little bit. If you can see the shape of the retention on the clip, it, it's straight down, but it was actually just a little bit curved in and it was sharp. So I took a Dremel to it and, uh, and filed it down a little bit, but it's a cool little knife. Uh, one last thing to talk about is just size. Overall length is six inches. It's a 2.5 inch blade, 154 CM hardened to HRC 60, 61. And there's not a whole lot of point to it. So it does make, you know, getting into packages and things a little bit trickier, uh, but I've had a lot of fun carrying and using this knife and uh, the price is right. Oh, and all titanium hardware, the screws, clip, body, everything else is titanium except for the blade. So really nice. And I don't know if I mentioned it, but it is on bearings, which is uh, why the action is so good. There you go. That is the Homer Jew T-Rex. He makes several other versions of knives. They're all affordable. That is, that is his thing. He wanted to make affordable custom knives. And this is the one that just jumped out at me. The Hero. I'm probably going to pick up a Hero at some point because it's a really cool lockback version. I'm a little bigger than this, but it is it's a tank. It's a serious tank. This thing's a tank for how small, like short it is, but still a really cool knife. One more time. This is the Homer Jew T-Rex. Not to be confused with Homer, this is a Herman knife. Uh, and this is a really, really, really nice knife. The most expensive knife in this video by a significant margin, about 50%, I think. This is the Herman Knives Slim. This was provided to me by Polish Custom Knives. They told me to pick out a Herman knife, and this is the one that jumped out at me the most. The finish work on this knife is outstanding. Uh, in the hand, it reminds me a whole lot of Shirogorov. It is obviously different from either of these uh, Shirogorov knives. This is the F95RT, this is the Neon Zero, and it is definitely closer in size to the F95, but just there's something about it. It's definitely not as hard use. It's not as robust, but the finishing and just something about it. I know that definitely the blade profile is a little different, but very similar, just something about it. And I can't really put my finger on it, but it's very similar. The action is not as good either. So uh, this is the F95 and this is the Herman. It's good, but it's not great. And I feel like it just needs to be broken in. They're both MRBS, so the bearings that you have inside this Herman knife are loose. You've got a little uh, disc and they sit inside that. When you take that disc off, those, those bearings will fly out. And uh, I almost, no, actually I did lose one. Fortunately, what is very cool is, if you can see here, there are some tiny little bearings. They send you some spare bearings. I think they send five, I have four, so I did lose one but that's a really nice touch. They don't include anything else in the, the package except for this. And this is my one big critique of this Herman knife. Up close, or, or from afar really, this looks like a Torx. It's very similar in shape. It kind of looks like flour, but the, the thing is you put a Torx in there, it's not gonna bite. So they include this, it has custom screws. Uh, well, at least this one's custom. These are Torx back here. This one is not. So they give you this little tool and it works. It's fine. You know, you can you can easily disassemble this thing, but having to have this, if you lose this, that's really not cool. Uh, so close to a Torx, not a Torx, not a fan of having proprietary screws on any part of any knife ever, but it is what it is. Sure Gorf's the same way. So you can only complain so much. So. The, the details are what really set this knife apart. Look at the pivot screw. I mean, that is just really beautiful. You got the same thing on the back side. You've got a different design on the clip, but it's it matches. So this is kind of like a wavy, this is straight. Uh, and then you've got a backspacer. This looks like a G10 or carbon fiber backspacer. Not entirely sure. The listing for this knife is gone, so I don't have all of the information. This does have a Pretty significant blade on it, 3.82 inch drop point and M390. Um, the one thing about the finishing, everything about this is immaculate, but the lasering for the logos is burned. So you can see actually like there's excess laser, like you can see around where it's lasered that it's actually burned. So if I took some like, uh, like a Brillo pad to this and, and were to like rub it a little bit or even maybe some flits, it would clean that up. But uh, that's just an interesting thing. They burned that deep 
into there. That aside, this knife is really nice. I enjoyed carrying this. The the one concern, I wouldn't call it a complaint, but the one concern I had at first was the clip. There was very little retention and it is long and very, very, very thin. And I did bend it out a little bit. So I ended up having to, you know, bend it back. And now it's got a little bit of a, almost like a recurve there, but it is tight. So I'm, I'm less worried about it now. And these little studs that you see here, those are actually polished ends to the screw. So the screws go all the way through into the other scale and through, they stick through um, and they're polished. It looks really nice. It's a very clean look. The one thing when I took this apart and put it back together, those screws are, I would say microscopically different. And if you don't have them in the right holes, they stick out a little further than they should in the wrong hole. So just a few little things about this that are a little odd, but personally, I think this is a killer, killer knife. This version, I don't remember how much it was. I, I believe in the ballpark of 600 to $650. The most recent listing for a slim on Polish custom knives was like 490. So a big variance in price. And I think it just has to do with materials and the backspacer and the finishing on it. I don't know what the difference is, but I, I would distinctly remember when I picked this one, it was in the ballpark of $600. And I think the only thing I haven't really mentioned is the overall length. It's a big knife, 8.86 inches overall, which does, as I showed earlier, put it in the ballpark of the Shirogorov F95 RT. This one's like right at nine inches. So not a small knife at all, but very, very thin and lightweight. And uh, just a sweet little knife. One more time, we have the Herman Knives Slim. This was provided to me by Polish Custom Knives, which if you want to look at his knives or want to buy one, that's where you're going to have to do it. So thank you again for letting me check this out. This is a really, really nice knife. So next up we have, yet again, something very Shirogorov-esque. This is the Crystal Knives Aurora. Comes in this nice little pouch. And this is a very different knife. Uh, from the outside, looks very Russian, doesn't it? Uh, they, they've just taken a lot of design cues from, I don't know that they've taken design cues from Shirogorov, but it just, there's a lot of similarities there. Uh, just in the angular design and and the, the construction of it, look at the pivot screw. It, it's just very Shirogorov-esque until you open it up. It's got a very different blade, almost a dagger style. It is a drop point, but it's almost a dagger style. And it's got this massive fuller in it. Uh, I guess that's weight reduction or just design. I don't know. It's a massive fuller. And inside there, I don't even know how you would describe that. It's almost stippled. It's like a, it's a very rough finish, but it feels like a, one of those Victorinox fingernail files, you could probably use this as a fingernail file, honestly. Um, it's a very interesting design. And also the, the stop here, there's no pin stop inside. It actually uses the thumb stud, which is a good design choice. It uses the thumb stud as your, your backstop, but it, the way it hooks around the backstop or the thumb stud is, is interesting. It just looks weird as when, when it's closed. It's not a bad thing. It's just just something that you note when you look at the profile of the knife. The action on this thing is incredible. It's just really, really smooth. And this knife is incredibly lightweight. 3.35 ounces. It feels lighter than that in the hand because the other knife we have uh, coming up next is also very lightweight, but this one just feels light. I think it's just because it's all metal and it just seems like it should be heavier. You've got a milled titanium clip. This is a titanium frame lock. It has a lock bar insert. It is on uh, a double row bearing. So I don't know that those are MRBS. I think it's just not caged, but they're, they're kind of stuck in there. I'm not exactly sure. I don't know that I ever took this apart because it does kind of have proprietary hardware. There is definitely milling inside, which is gonna be one of the reasons it's so lightweight. Nice long backspacer here. Number 39 of 160 S35VN. And this side says Mandy Bragnitz Design. I'm guessing that's a name, but very futuristic looking knife. I love the mill lines in it. I think it's a cool, interesting knife. I've carried it a good bit. As you can see by the scales, a lot of snail trails on it. Since I said it was very Shirogorov-esque, I might as well show it alongside a Shirogorov. Here again is the F95RT and the 
neon zero. So this one's more of like a midsize in there, uh, right in between the two. The overall length on this one is 8.46 inches with a 3.74 inch drop point blade. So the killer feature here with this knife is the price. This one's gonna go for around $200, which is uh, really, really nice for what you're getting. The kind of action, the fit and finish on this, everything about this is really, really solid. And that action, super snappy. The acoustics on it are also really strange. I don't know why, but they are. And then the other thing, there's the bearings actually, there's a spare set right there. Custom Knife Factory does this as well, where they send you a full set of spare hardware. So every piece of hardware on here, other than the scales and the knife itself is included inside this. It says Ivan, not man. <laughs> uh, so this is actually another one of those instances where the lasering is so deep and dark that it's actually bled out around it. So it kind of blurs together. But there you go, one more time. This is the Crystal Knives Aurora. This was provided to me by Crystal Knives. And uh, if you wanna pick this up, you can go check it out on foresthome.ru. So that's forest-home.ru. It'll be linked down below, uh, but that's where these are sold in Russia. So this one I think is gonna be the most well-known knife in this video, but I felt like including it because I finally got my hands on one and uh, it's just so good. It's just so good. So for any of you out there who are not aware, this is Three Rivers Manufacturing. They're made here in the USA, as indicated by the box. This is just a little information about the lifetime warranty and whatnot. So this is the TRM Atom, and Herman called this right here a slim knife, the Herman Slim. And the Atom is even slimmer. So it has pocket liners. These liners are recessed inside these micarta scales and that makes this thing ultra thin. It's also very lightweight at just three ounces, just super minimal, very lightweight. TRM does say this is not a hard use knife, and it's not, but it is a very, very, very good everyday carry knife. Just to get a few specs out of the way, this knife has an overall length of 8.19 inches. As I said, the weight is three ounces. The blade on this is a 3.5 inch flat grind drop point in 20 CV. It isn't a full flat grind. There's, you can see a little saber grind line right there up at the top, but it is very, very slicey. Look how thin this blade stock is. Like this is a super slicey knife. The Herman Slim, super slicey. Look how thin that blade stock is. I really like this knife. I've been carrying it a lot off and on for a few weeks and I debated carrying this as my backpacking knife, but I ultimately went with something a little more robust. You do get a titanium deep carry clip your pivot and pivot screws are stainless steel and your thumb stud is titanium. As I said, the liners are titanium. All the hardware is custom as well. And it does come on washers, but I swear you wouldn't know it. Look at this action, flick it open, closed. It's one of the smoothest washer knives I've ever used. I mean, the first time I used it or flicked it open, it felt like it was on bearings, but this is on phosphor bronze washers and Boy, it's really, really good. I do like that they include this little choil here for choking up for fine work. Consider me a fan of the TRM Atom. You know the best thing about this knife is the price. You get all of this stuff, 20 CV liner with super low tolerances, just everything made here in the US. Like this thing is top notch. $205. It's ridiculous. It's a super good deal. And that brings us to the worst part about this knife. They are really hard to buy. And that's because it's such a good deal. It is a really good knife for the money and people just buy them up quickly. So you're more likely to buy this on secondary than firsthand. Uh, if you can get lucky, try to get one on a drop so you don't have to pay those secondary prices. I did. I bought this in the, in the discord server secondhand and, uh, I had to pay a little bit of a premium on it, but it is what it is. I wanted it, it's a good knife. Glad I finally got one. This will not be my last TRM. The last knife on this list is uh, something that I think more people should know about for sure. And full disclosure, I don't know if it comes in this taco pouch or not. I know it doesn't come in this one because this is just a random one from the drawer, but all the others were in their pouches and whatnot. So I felt like I should at least present this one in similar light. I don't remember how it shipped, sorry. But this, is a Wells Blade Works Custom. So this knife is fully custom. I think that's how he operates. He may do some, some maker's choice where he builds one he wants and then sells it. 
but this one was commissioned by me, DM'd him after finding out about him, and built my knife to my spec. Super easy to work with. He makes sure you're gonna get what you want, and he's very thorough, and he sends you pictures of every step of the process. It was painless. And, and honestly, I don't think he charges enough. What I got for this, like, I got everything I wanted in a knife, and it was $325 shipped. Made in Richmond, not Richmond, uh, Roanoke area. Nope, nope, Rockingham. <laughs> He's in the Shenandoah Valley of Virginia, so it's still pretty close to here. But this is built entirely to my spec. So there are, there's like a framework, there's a limitation to what you can do. Like all the handles are pretty similar looking. So you have to kind of like his style to begin with, but beyond those few parameters that you can't change, like the fact that they're all liner locks and they're all on phosphor bronze washers, you get to choose everything else. So let's go over what I chose to make this knife possible. I chose a 3.25 inch drop point 20 CV blade with a flat grind and an acid etch. I chose OD micarta scales, because of course that comes with some G10 liners that are black and then a matching backspacer, a deep carry pocket clip, right hand tip up, and bronzed hardware. That's all flame anodized hardware. And I think that's everything. Uh, like I said, all of that was $325 shipped, made to my specification, which is really cool. But you can choose different blade styles, blade shapes, you can choose different blade lengths, you can choose different opening methods. That's the one thing I forgot to mention. Um, I chose the oval, thumb hole, and front flipper. So uh, two best ways to open a knife, in my opinion, I put in this one knife. So I'm a really big fan of this knife because I chose everything about it. I chose everything I wanted. So really cool, great value. And uh, it was just a pleasant experience all around. And this thing's great. It's got solid lockup, no blade play, really good action. But yeah, it did come a little dry, so it was a little stiff and I took it apart, gave it some oil and it's operating smoothly. And just like with the TRM, this was a knife that I considered to take backpacking, but the reason I didn't is the 20 CV blade steel. So this one's also 20 CV, but the finish on the TRM, this stonewashed finish is, or tumbled finish, is very, very resistant to rust and stuff. Like that would not be a concern with the TRM. 20 CV is fairly corrosion resistant. But when you add this acid etch to it, oh man, I just got surface rust carrying this around for two weeks. And I knew that when I was backpacking, I was gonna be super sweaty, but I, I wouldn't be afraid to carry this thing backpacking. I think this would be a really good knife for that. Um, not to relate everything to backpacking. I'm just saying this was in contention with the TRM and a few of my Chris Reeve knives and a few fixed blades. So just for the application, like I got this thing to be like a work knife, a tool knife, and that's exactly what it is. It feels like that. And I wouldn't say the ergonomics on this thing are, you know, spectacular. They're not bad at all, but the comfort. So I think there's definitely a difference in ergonomics and comfort. Ergonomics meaning like my grip on this knife being you know, exactly what I'd want. I don't think it's that, but in the hand, it fits perfectly and it feels very tooly in the hand. It feels like a tool, but obviously there are knives with better ergonomics. I'm just saying it, it feels super comfortable. It fills the hand, it's not big or bulky, no hot spots. it's just smooth all around, really good knife. And it, it just has that like farm knife feel and look, and I'm all for it. So one more time, this, is the Wells Blade Works Custom that I had commissioned. There's no there's no name or model number or anything. They're all customs, they're all one-offs. So he doesn't have like a name for it, but this one is the one that I had built. And uh, I don't think this will be my last Wells knife either. All right, so just to recap, we have the Wells Blade Works from Walter Wells, just a custom I had commissioned, the TRM Adam, the Crystal Knives Aurora, the Herman Knives Slim, and the Homer Zhu T-Rex. These are five knife brands and five knives from knife brands that you should know about. And if you're in the market, you should strongly consider looking at what these brands have to offer. I think you've got a pretty good price range here. Everything from $200 up to about 600 plus. Just really, really solid options here on the table. 
hope you guys check them out. That's it for this video, guys. I hope you found it helpful and enjoyed it. If you did, hit that thumbs up button down below and subscribe to see more stuff like this in the future and hit the notification bell so you're notified when I upload new videos. If you wanna support what I'm doing here, hit the links in the description down below. Many of those are affiliate links so I get a little bit of a kickback. Doesn't cost you anything extra. You can also go to patreon.com forward slash bestmedc to support there or bestmedc.com where you can buy gear and merch directly from me like the shirt and other hats, all sorts of stuff. All the designs that are there right now are probably gonna be wiped out in the next two months. So if there is a design you like in the store, buy it because they're gonna get gone. Just saying it. Anyway, you can find us around the web in most places at Best MEDC. But with that said, and until next time, carry on. Mm -hmm.